of woman's fashion as a wonderful, wonderful artist. She will speak on Drawn to Fashion, the title of her book, which you received in your packets. Mary has lost 30 some years as a fashion illustrator or top designer for major department stores. She was born Mary Crosses to Greek immigrant parents in Buffalo, New York. She married Carney, Nebraska native, Georgetown Law School graduate John Mitchell in 1951. The couple settled in Carney. Mary took classes at Carney State College, now the University of Nebraska at Carney. And this association led to her teaching courses at the Art Department. Just recently, the Department of Textiles, Merchandising, and Fashion Design of the University of Nebraska-Lincoln announced the dedication of the Mary Mitchell Studio in conjunction with her exhibit, Drawn to Fashion, the illustration of Mary Mitchell. There is no one more deserving of this honor and no one more skilled at her art. I'm pleased and honored to present my friend, Mary Mitchell. Archbishop Charles and Annie Cotras, and distinguished guests. Fashion has been an integral part of my life for a long time. As Coco Chanel once said, quote, fashion is not something that exists in dresses only. Fashion is in the sky, in the street, and fashion has to do with ideas. <coughs> the way we live and what is happening, <coughs> unquote. And I would like to add to that, throughout history, fashion illustration has played a key role in recording moments in time from the exquisitely crafted 16th century prints of Albert Durer and the heyday of artists like Cecil Beaton, Leon Box, and Erte in the period surrounding the two world wars to today, when access to new technology has made it a multimedia discipline, fashion illustration has both affected and help shape the way we see ourselves, our style, and the world we live in. When I was first approached about having an exhibit of my fashion illustrations and later, later writing a book, there was a lot of discussion about how I chose my own path in the field of art, particularly since I grew up in a time when art was not considered an appropriate career choice for young women. We were expected to be wives and mothers, or perhaps secretaries, but not artists. Ironically, it was two women who took more traditional paths who urged and inspired me to pursue my dreams. The first was my mother, Irene Cavassus, who had an enormous influence on me. My parents were immigrants from a small town in northern Greece called Siatisa. They came to this country to make a better life for themselves. My dad opened a candy and ice cream shop in Buffalo, New York, and the two worked long, hard hours together. And as a little girl sitting back in the shop, my homework, I would take up my pad, pencils, and crayons and draw. My mom encouraged me and also made sure I had dance and piano lessons. That's when I started dreaming of becoming an artist. The other woman who influenced the direction of my life ultimately took was my art teacher at Bennett High School in Buffalo, New York which was not in my school district, but had an excellent art program. 
I had to attend South Park High for my freshman year, which had no art program at all. So I decided to go to Buffalo City Hall to get approval to transfer to Bennett High. It was way on the other side of town. And I had to take three different buses to get to school. It made for a very long and tiring day, especially in the dead of winter in Buffalo. <laughs> My art teacher was phenomenal, and she encouraged me to enter national art contests, including one that I won from the Container Corporation of America and Hallmark Cards, plus several, several others. She nurtured my dream of attending Syracuse University by starting a portfolio of my artwork. And she made me believe that a young woman could have a career in art. The importance of an excellent teacher can never be overestimated. But <clears throat> tragically, two months before I graduated from high school, my mom died at the age of 39. leaving me grieving and distraught. I was just 17 and an only child. To make matters worse, my dad informed me that he would not pay for me to go away to college or art school. In his old world mentality, he wanted me to stay with him in Buffalo and go to secretarial school. I was devastated. Once again, though, my mother's love and devotion prevailed. Unbeknownst to me, she had been saving the dimes and quarters from the jukebox in our candy store. And the savings account was in my name. I used it to enroll at the University of Buffalo at Albright Art School and continued living at home. I graduated as a fashion illustrator and got my first job at a department store in Buffalo. Well, during that time, I was very involved in our St. John's Greek Orthodox Church. In addition to being in the choir and teaching Sunday school, I was a member of the Maids of Athens, and as chapter president, I was sent to the National and Heaven Convention in Cleveland, Ohio, as a delegate. Well, that's where I met a young lawyer. By the name of John Mitchell, really the Chopolis. And he was the uh, vice chairman of the convention. John had recently graduated with honors from Georgetown Law School. After a long distance courtship, we married. We lived in Kearney for a number of years, and since there were no opportunities in fashion illustration for me there, I decided to go back to school to the University of Nebraska and took several courses. I was very pleased when they later asked me to teach in the art department. Eventually, we moved to Omaha, where I got a wonderful position as a fashion illustrator at a prestigious department store. After working there for four years, I decided to start freelancing, and that was one of the best decisions I had ever made. So many of the retailers started calling on me and to sketch their clothes and do their advertising. I must have had over 15 clients and I was extremely busy. At this point, John and I co-founded Young and Mitchell Advertising Agency, where I was vice president and creative director. There I had called on account, helped with the radio ads, and created television storyboards among other design aspects. And during this time also, John and I got involved in restaurants. The first one was a French restaurant with a French chef called Le Versailles. And the other one, the Golden Apple, which I created the concept, theme, and menu design, plus decorating the interiors. Well, let's get back to fashion. In the world of fashion merchandising and retailing, fashion illustration has long played an important and indispensable role. 
It serves as a bridge between the creation conceived by the fashion designer and the illustrator's interpretation of it through a drawing sketched on paper that, when published in the newspaper, will actually sell to a consumer. A skilled fashion illustrator must be able to reduce the architecture of the garment to its essentials while amplifying its appeal, emphasizing what is alluring about it. This is no small task, when the only means at her disposal are strokes of a pencil, pen, brush, or brush on paper. My approach to illustrating apparel is based on providing realistic and pragmatic renderings that speaks to diverse audiences, and that means the needs of retailers and consumers alike. As an illustrator, I had to create a relationship of trust between buyer and seller that would result in a mutually satisfying and enriching experience. To accomplish that, it was essential to realize that retailers capitalize on the desires of the client, and the client, in turn, relies on the integrity of the materials, techniques, and form as represented through the artist's eye and hand to justify what is sometimes a considerable capital outlay. Fashion illustrations the group of the imagination. They are facsimiles, but ones that invite fantasy and introspection, that allow the client, no matter what her body type or size, to place herself in the picture and visualize herself in the garment. My illustrations had to show the texture of the garment, whether it was herringbone, tweed, sequins, satin, leather, or fur, so that the customer could visualize the sensuality of the materials while understanding the garment's versatility and wearability at a glance. Basically, I had to make each garment appear not easy to wear, but just ready to wear. Well, which brings me to technique. How did I produce the desired look in a black and white drawing for a newspaper ad? For one company, I used a number 935 black pencil on textured paper with varying degrees of shading going from light to dark to capture the look of various materials. And I accentuated fur and sequins with white paint. I rendered lace and intricate jewelry with India ink and a fine quill pen. Another technique involved was using a brush and mixing India ink with water or a fluorographic solution and painting on illustration board. My experience taught me that fashion illustration enjoys a unique double identity. It is fine art, but it also has a very important commercial application. For most of the 20th century, department stores comprised a huge segment of a newspaper's advertising base. Until the late 1980s, illustration was the major tool in retail advertising. Stores had their own advertising departments, their own artists, and we had actual clothes right in front of us to be sketched, me, <clears throat> sketched for the ad that would appear in the paper. My job also involved other aspects of advertising. I would determine the size of the ad according to the budget and then lay it out, choosing where the headline copy, logo, and drawing of the bead. I drew the article, wrote and proofread the copy, and after it came back with a typesetter, then I would cut it with an exacto knife and pasted everything in place with rubber cement. And, and 
then there were no computers in those days. And that I mentioned I was always working under a deadline. The highest compliment I would receive about my work was when the ad motiva motivated customers. I recall the owner of a shoe store in Omaha telling me his customers would rush into his store with my shoe ad in their hands and want to buy that pair of shoes. The customer might have gotten a great pair of shoes, but I was the one walking on air. <laughs> Over the course of my career, I had the joy of illustrating the creations of celebrated designers such as Geoffrey Bean, Emilio Pucci, Oscar de la Renta, Gior Giorgio Armani, and Valentino, among others. When people talk about their favorite fashion era, they often choose the 60s. For me, it was the 80s. Sure, the 60s had Jackie O and Audrey Hepburn, but the 80s had Oscar de la Renta and the very famous shoe designer, Manolo Blahnik. What can I say? I can't resist a beautiful pair of shoes. I love the strong lines I love the strong lines and vivid colors of the 80s. Silhouettes were stronger and had more definition. Shoulders were in, waists were not. It was a Joan Crawford look, reimagined for a Joan Collins era. The one downside of the 80s, of course, was it ushered in the end of fashion illustration in local newspapers. Photography took over and the retailers cut back on hiring illustrators to advertise their products. When the iconic shopping neck of Gimbel's of New York closed its doors in 1986, the loss of $10 million in annual ad revenue struck a severe blow to the ailing New York Daily News, according to urbanologist George Sterling. It was a time of trans transition for the industry and as for me also. So I decided to put my skills to work for our Mitchell Broadcasting Company. John had acquired 22 radio stations in the Midwest, and so I started working full time as vice president at our Omaha headquarters, where I handled all the advertising, designing the logos newspaper layouts, billboards, and bus advertising signs. It was indeed fun and extremely rewarding. But my love affair with fashion never stopped. I had saved over a thousand of my original drawings, and they were the impetus for the exhibition in 2012 at the Durham Museum in Omaha and of course the accompanying book, Drawn to Fashion. My illustrations were on display for four months and viewed by 43,000 people. Next, it traveled to the University of Nebraska in Lincoln, where the official dedication of the Mary Mitchell Fashion Design Studio took place on October 21st, 2012. When I was writing my book, I had the great fortune to get a phone call from Oscar de la Renta, whose stunning creations I had always loved to draw. My co-chairs for the Drawn to Fashion exhibit had sent him some of my illustrations, including several of his designs, and they asked him if he would comment on my drawings. Well, that's what he called me. One of the things we discussed was his ad campaign for his fall 2011 perfume, Live in Love, which features a fashion illustration by British art. And so I have established the Mary Mitchell Scholarship Illustration Fund with the hope that today's aspiring fashion illustrators and designers 
will be able to achieve careers as rich and fulfilling as mine has been. We have already awarded four scholarships this year and plan to do so in perpetuity. It is my fondest wish that the scholarship fund can help pave the way for exciting careers for young people who are today just like I was as a child, dreaming of beautiful clothes, making them, drawing them, selling them, loving the creative life, and feeling that powerful urge to get involved. Young people who are just like I was drawn to fashion. And being invited here at Leadership 100's conference is indeed a very memorable and profound occasion for me and my family. At this time, I would like to thank the outstanding and exceptional Charles and Connie Cotras. been such exceptional and tremendous friends throughout these last few years while we are living in Long Key, Florida, and we are so privileged to know you. And now I would like to thank that dynamic and hardworking Paulette Poulos. And my thanks also go to Alexander Payne who did the narration for the video that you will see later, uh, shown also at our exhibit. And my eternal and gracious thanks to my husband, John. My wonderful son and daughter-in-law, John and Kathleen, and my exceptional grandchildren, Emily and John Bernard. Our grandson, John Bernard, is in his first year in medical school, and Emily is graduating from Stanford this June. Would John, Kathleen, John, and Emily please stand? And above all, thanks, Mom. Thank you for sharing your your work and your fashion with us. We would love to present to you the Archbishop Yacomo Leadership 100 Award for Excellence for the wonderful work and the wonderful tribute that you give us. Thank you.